Okay, so, I have started mm, modding game cartridges with, like, ROM hacks and stuff. A little while ago, I stumbled upon a video, um, I'll give a shout out to John Riggs from Rigged Gaming, the video about how to make these kinds of custom uh, cartridges where you're basically, like, taking a ROM and burning it onto an EEPROM. Oh, I do have one right here. Look at this. That's like vintage computer right there. So yeah, once I saw that video, I was like, damn it, now I definitely have to do this. Um, which is fine, because it was probably inevitable ever since I found uh, this cartridge for Sonic Mega Mix in a uh, classic game store a few years ago. Um, plus a while ago, I did a, a few instances of battery modding some, com some cartridges. Like, I got, like, a soldering iron and, like, all these tools and stuff, but then I only used it to, like, replace batteries on a couple cartridge games, kind of for no reason. And then just for years, I've just had, like, all this stuff sitting around and thinking, like, man, I should be doing some awesome shit with that, but instead it's in a box. So now let's do some awesome shit with it. I got, um, I got my soldering iron here, and you can tell that I bought the soldering iron when I was single because I only needed the most basic thing possible, but I spent like over a hundred dollars on a soldering iron, basically because I could, and it had pretty colors. So what we're going to be doing as a fun bonus for patrons, basically in my own time, I was looking into getting into this cartridge modding thing, and then because we're doing like a big new push for our Patreon page, um, Keith was looking for something that we could do as like a monthly physical reward and I kind of um, almost as a joke was like hey what if I make a different ROM hack cartridge every month and send it out to the people that are donating at like a super high level or something and he really liked that idea so we're gonna do it um, but just to make it more fun for the people that aren't literally rich um, we're gonna be doing every month, the way it's gonna work is our $9 patron level, that's the level where you get, like, Shenmue and Yakuza and all our, like, exclusive Let's Plays. Oh, wait, no, that's, now the $9 level is Yakuza and Shenmue is down at the $6 level, if you haven't watched Shenmue yet. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is, every month, I'm gonna make, um, a fun new ROM hack cartridge that I think is cool, and we're gonna basically raffle one off to someone at the $9 patron level. And then, um, anybody that's at the $50 patron level will, that's, that's the Cartridge Club VIP, unofficial name, that's just for you, you keep that. Uh, if you're at the $50 level, you will automatically just get a copy of the same cartridge every month, so you don't have to win it, like the lowly rabble. Um, so the way all this stuff basically works, you can make custom cartridges from all new parts. People do sell them, and you can assemble games entirely on your own. Um, but the way most people do it, and definitely the most cost-effective way, is to open up an old game um, and take the chips off the board. Um, oh, this is one here, the chips, I already took them off. So because a lot of cartridge modding involves destroying old games. It's a little controversial uh, within like the game collecting community. I was actually kind of surprised because I knew that people ever, you know, ever since I found this um, and was just in love with the idea that I could play this awesome ROM hack on a real Sega Genesis, um, I always just thought the idea was awesome and I found a few people online that made these kinds of things and sold them and they also sold like um, reproductions of games that are really hard to find, so I think, like, Earthbound has gone down in value a lot, but, you know, like, Earthbound used to be $300, and now you can get a copy of Earthbound for your Super Nintendo for, like, $30. It's not a real copy of Earthbound, but it's just as good. <laughs> Glorp says it isn't that controversial, because there's, like, billions of copies of Wheel of Fortune. And yeah, that's what it really comes down to, is most of the games that are getting cannibalized for these kinds of cartridges... Sorry, this is me heading it off at the pass, because the one thing that I found in... There's actually a surprisingly small number of videos on YouTube that are showing this kind of stuff about how you make custom cartridges, and I'm not really meaning this to be a tutorial as much as it is... Uh, I don't know, what's like a, what's when something's like a tutorial, but it's not that instructive? Nothing, I guess? 
So the one thing that I've noticed on all these cartridge modding videos is that the number one thing in the comments is always just people arguing about the ethics of cartridge modding. And it's a little much. So let's just head it off right here. Don't bother. <laughs> You're not going to change anyone's mind. But really, it's just not that big a deal. This is a really weird analogy to make, but we... I, or it, I feel like this comes up a lot for me. I'm a person that cares a lot about spoilers, and I, it really ruins things for me when I found out stuff that happens in movies or games uh, before I experience them. But other people don't care at all. They can't even conceive of caring about spoilers, because it's just a difference in people's brains. Some people are spoiler people, some people are non-spoiler people. And so, like, when it comes to this cartridge mod thing, I think some people get really bent out of shape because it's like, they can't imagine wanting a fake game. They were like, well, nobody wants a fake game, so that means the only people buying modded games are people that are being duped into buying fake games. They think they're getting a real copy of Earthbound for 30 bucks, and they don't realize. Um, but, like, no. Like, there, there definitely are a few bad people out there that are doing that. I actually saw somebody trying to sell a fake copy of the Majora's Mask demo cartridge for, like, $1,000. Um... The Majora's Mask demo cartridge, I guess, is worth a $1,000. Um, it's just one of those weird things. It's just a demo for Majora's Mask that was in, like, kiosks and stuff, but now it's super rare. Um, yeah, so that person was... It, it said, like, it was an eBay listing, it said in the title, reproduction. But they were just hoping that whoever bought it didn't notice or didn't know what that meant. Um, but by and large, you know, like, I know that there's people out there that legitimately want to buy these things because they think they're awesome, because I'm one of those people. These things are fucking awesome. Like, I saw a forum thread where, years ago, people were talking about this. They were like, there's people on eBay selling copies of Sonic Mega Mix. That's so fucked up that they're tricking people into paying for a free ROM. Like, no, you're not paying. Like, then when you buy this, you're not paying for the ROM. The ROM's free. Anyone can get that. You're paying for the work that someone put in to make it into a cartridge that works on a Sega Genesis. That's what this is about. So anyways, don't bother arguing about the ethics of cartridge modding, especially because most of these, most of the games that are being cannibalized for this are just the cheapest games that people can find, which are always sports games. So it's like, you know, fucking, do you real? does the world really need one more copy of Tommy Lasorda Baseball for the Genesis to exist? Like, you... Half of you watching this, more than half of you watching this, didn't even know that Tommy Lasorda Baseball was a game. Isn't this cooler than a copy of Tommy Lasorda Baseball? Isn't the world better off with a hacked copy of Sonic 2 where you play as Amy and Cream instead of Tom Sonic and Tails? Isn't that better? Because that's this is, this is the one that I've made so far, so I'm new to this. I, I turned a copy of Tommy Lasorda Baseball into a copy of Sonic 2 Pink Edition, and that's what we're going to be making this time. Um, I'm committing to this Patreon game thing for at least a year, so I'm going to be making one a month, and I'm hoping that I'm going to make it into a video. I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, you know, I, I saw people saying, like, dude, just play the ROM in an emulator. Don't destroy any games. It's like, dude, play Tommy Lasorda Baseball in an emulator. Like, fuck off. <laughs> like, if there's any game that deserves to be played on real hardware, it's awesome stuff like Sonic Mega Mix, not fucking dumbass baseball games that nobody remembers. And I'm really sorry if you like Tommy Lasorda Baseball. I didn't even play it, so I, I don't like baseball or the video games based on it, so that's just me. So instead, we're going to be modding the Page Master. Oh, the Page Master. Remember the Page Master? <laughs> No, no, the other, the Page Master. Huh? I'm a cartoon. Not that. I were. hate this. Yes. What? Wait, why are some of these books hurting me and other ones I can jump on and kill? And then, why can I not jump on these bats? What? I hate this. This is the try? worst. Bat Page Master. I guess that's it. Let's get started. My room is a complete wreck right now. It looks like the layer of a mad scientist. If it was like a mad scientist who only cared about like shitty Genesis baseball games and like printing the same two pictures like over and over again.
So what we have to do to take this off is to desolder it using our desoldering iron. And guys, if I could quote Star Wars for a moment, and I know that I can, she may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. Um, so this will heat up the solder, and then this little sucker bulb thing, I'll push it in, melt the solder, and then go whoop, and it'll suck it off the board like a turkey baster. Uh, but I do need to give it a second to warm up. I'll do this. Oh, oh. Don't put the soldering iron on your lap, Kyle. Hot tip. Literally. And so over here, not sure if that shows up on the video or not, this is just where I'm going to spit out the solder. You can kind of see it's like shiny at the bottom. Um, look at all that. It's kind of weird. Um, I put some water at the bottom, though, because what was happening was uh, when I would go to squirt it in, there would be like puffs of solder dust coming out and stuff, so I put some water in there just to keep it all at the bottom. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and do this. So that's it, and you might be able to see that. Or not. Um, but that's about it. It's Gotta hold it on for a second and then just get it done. And also, I meant to kind of stress this a little bit earlier, I think I just kind of mentioned it a little bit and then walked past it, but just want to be clear that I'm still very much a beginner at this. This isn't me trying to show you like an expert at work, this is me trying to be like, hey, let's go on this journey together. Oh, I just got some fucking solder on the board. Let's see if I can... Okay, so I've sucked the solder off of all the pins here. I'm just kind of giving like a quick double check because the thing is, sometimes, and especially with Genesis games, the once you do the desoldering iron on all the pins, it'll come out like super easily. But sometimes, and especially my experience on these uh, weird white Genesis boards. It's a, it's a real problem because it just takes like one little bit of solder on like one or two pins and then the whole thing won't come up and it's a big fucking hassle. So here we're gonna take our, um, this is a chip lifting tool, it's for scooping up under computer chips and prying them out. Let's give this a little go here. Oh, it's just, it's just stuck. It's like it's not even uh, oh, there we go. Hey, ah, uh, looks like it might be these these first few pins. This happens sometimes. I'm like, I'm not. It takes me a little bit to like get into the desoldering iron groove. So sometimes the first few pins that I do aren't very good. I think that should be good. I'll go from the other side, really. There we go. Oh, it came out so easy. 
What was I worried for? I should check the holes up against the light. Can't see it, but it looks good. That was actually uh, way less disastrous than I thought it was going to be. Um, so this is basically junk now, but I mean, I'm not going to throw it out. Um, but yeah. Oh, you know what? I always forget to do this. I should always do it when it's still on the board, but I like to take a silver Sharpie and just, uh, so I can remember what they are. You know, Page Master. Oh, my old silver Sharpie's kind of getting shitty. Because, boy, there's nothing worse than looking at a black chip that just says Sega on it and going, ah, what's that? Though I guess I could just put it in my EEPROM reader and find out. Um, crap, what's the next step, you guys? Oh, probably putting uh, a new game on a new chip. Um, this is one of the most fun things to learn about all this stuff, is uh, this right here is called an EEPROM. Uh, and I guess you would call this not a prom. This is just a ROM. This is read-only memory. Um, and EEPROM is Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. And it's mostly for development work when you're, like, working on a new electronic device. You put these in here because uh, something like this, which is a mask ROM, a chip like this is a one-time write, I believe. I could be wrong, but it's basically, you know, you put the page master on there, and that's it. It's set there forever. I think if, if you think if you put the wrong thing on there, you basically just have to throw it away and put a new one. These ones are erasable, and this window right here is what makes it erasable. What's amazing <laughs> about it is that it's not like any computer storage that you would think of nowadays where you can just erase it simply by overwriting the data. The way you have to erase, uh, erase it here is that what you the gold thing you see through the window here is actually like the, I don't know what you'd call it, the data array or whatever. This holds all the information on the chip, but it's sensitive to UV light. UV light will destroy the data that's written on here. So in order to erase it, we got to put it in one of these. It's an EEPROM eraser. It's literally just a drawer, uh, and it shines a UV light on it, and it's got like an egg timer up here, and that's about it. You can see in there, those are some, those are some NES ROMs. Shh. Or NES EEPROMs. So that was like, that was weird and fun. I'm just a huge fan of like weird old technology stuff like that. So you have to erase EEPROMs by uh, putting them under a UV light. Anecdotally, you can also do the same thing by like putting it in like a really well lit windowsill from like, you know, the sun uh, for a few hours and that'll erase them, but much more reliable to just throw them in an EEPROM eraser for like 20 minutes or something. All right, so let's do it. Let's put Sonic 2 Pink Edition on this chip here. Okay, so now it's time to put the game on an EEPROM using our EEPROM programmer. Uh, oh, I've already got one in there. I lied. We're not using this one because that one's already in there. Um, so we've got, got a little lever right here and you just stick it in there and then you lock it in and this is a USB device. So now we'll go over to the computer. So this here is our programming software. Um, um, you have to tell it what kind of chip that you're writing to and there's like a million kinds, but I've already got it set up. So first we got to do our blank check to make sure this is fun. You have to you you have to ask it if it's blank and then wait a minute. Like it has to figure out if the chip is actually blank. Okay, we didn't get an error message which means it's blank and also chip is blank. So that's good. That's not and that's here's here's another fun thing about this. That's not a hundred percent reliable, but it has been for me. I've heard I've heard talk about a lot of people uh that need to like double check their chips all the time because it keeps telling them that they're blank when they're not. I haven't encountered that problem, so I guess we'll just let it go. 
Um, and then let's open. Oh, I guess you can't see that, but we're gonna. I'm selecting Sonic 2 Pink Edition, hitting open, hitting OK, and now here's a ROM. You can see Sega Genesis 1992 Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Pink Edition. And then uh, to here's a fun thing. I this was never explained to me, but I assume this is just some kind of weird old ass version of like DRM, like copy protection. Is you have to do what's called a byte swap on Genesis ROMs, which flips the data around. You can see it doesn't really. Uh, I can't highlight over here, but it doesn't really make sense anymore. That's a byte swap. Now we're gonna write it. Click write, and now we wait. Now we're doing our verification check to make sure that everything that wrote was correct. It has to verify because the writing process uh, is fallible, so it can go wrong, so you need to verify it. But of course the verification is also fallible, so it might verify it and go, yeah, it looks good when it's still not, because all this shit is sorcery. That's really unlikely, though. Hey, we're done! Let's, uh... Pop this chip out. And this should be a working, uh... Sonic 2 Pink Edition ROM chip now. I just have to check, like, a wiring diagram real quick. So, um, the thing about this, as I mentioned before, is a 4 meg chip game that we're putting on at Sonic 2 Pink Edition and the game that we're taking it from, Page Master, those are both 2 meg games, so there's an extra step here um, that you have to do. One of the pins is not... One of the pins we can't put into the board because it'll send it to the wrong place for our purposes. So we're going to have to bend one of these pins up and then solder a wire directly from the pin to the cartridge tooth at the bottom so that it routes the data properly. So just 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is the shit. I just, it's like so. This is the one, and I moved, and now it's gone. Okay. I hope this works because you can't bend these pins too many times. You can't bend them too many times; they'll snap right off, and the chip's useless. Um, so, now, oh, okay, well, the annoying part is here, now we have to take, gotta take this chip, ah, gotta take this chip, gotta put it in here, but the pins, oh my god, oh my god, I was just about to say, the pins never line up properly for you to just slide the chip in. And I'll definitely have to use this straightener tool to straighten the pins, but it just went right in! It was like magic. It was meant to be. What a wonderful day. In the neighborhood. Um, yeah, so now we're gonna do some good old-fashioned soldering. I'm gonna get this out of here just to save some space. Unless we need it later to fix some mistakes. Now we have, we've got this little guy. You'll see these in a, a lot of videos of people soldering. This is a helping hand. Though I always think of it as a handy helper because my kids watch nothing but Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Uh, and this will hold stuff for you. Hold boards and stuff. You got your magnifying glass right here. Ooh. That's, can you see it? Is it bigger? 
What? Kind of playing to the wrong camera here. Whoa. Because um, the hard part about soldering is having enough hands to hold all the things. And this will be especially a problem when we get to that part where I have to solder that one wire. I thought soldering wires onto games was going to be easy, because it looked pretty easy, but it was actually a fucking nightmare. Um, so, despite how neat this guy looks, um, it can actually sometimes be kind of difficult to solder a board that's being held by this thing, so it's not quite as useful as it maybe looks at first glance, but I'll give it a shot just so it's a little closer to my face, I can see it, see the board better. Gonna start by uh, tinning it, I guess, is what people say. It's... We're gonna, if you don't know how soldering works, I'm gonna heat up the metal contact and the pin over here so that they get um, hot enough to melt the solder, and then I'm gonna touch the solder to the metal. Uh, it'll melt the solder uh, for a moment, and that'll create a nice metal bond between these things. Hmm, this is not heating up properly. There we go. One down. Oh, I'm supposed to... Fucking idiot, that's why it wasn't working. Gotta put a little bit on the tip there, get things spread around. Okay. All right, so that might be all the pin soldering we need to do, but I'm gonna have to take a look at it here. My magnifying glass. Ah, shit. I just realized. I, I just realized. I looked at the chip and realized that it's. It's hard, hard to see. Yeah, yeah, you can see it like that. It's like sticking out partially. It wasn't actually in the board all the way when I... Oh, man, you know what I really forgot how I messed up here was... Um, I put the chip in, and then I flipped the board over like this and just started soldering on it. And what I didn't think about was what I needed to do was put it flat like this and like solder here and here so that when I lifted it up, and put it in the little arm thing, the chip wouldn't fall out as I was soldering it, but that's exactly what happened. Um, so that is definitely not ideal. That's very unfortunate, but I don't think it's gonna actually cause any real problems. Hmm, I don't, maybe, maybe this'll, I don't, cause I won't feel good about like sending this out to one of our patrons if the chip is all fucked up, so maybe, I'll end up keeping this one and making another one that'll go out to patrons or something. We'll see. But like I said, it should be fine. As long as it can still fit in the cartridge, though, that's the... Let's test it. Yeah. Yeah, that fits just fine. I'm, like, looking in there and, like, it's just... Like, if it was a millimeter, if it was protruding from the board a millimeter further, 
it might be a problem, but it's fine. Man, that sucks. Okay. Let's just redo it. That's part of learning. It's a learning process. If I was following proper safety etiquette, I would wear m my safety glasses. But then I would look like a nerd. No nerds allowed in Cartridge Club. Did I mention that? No! <laughs> just had the soldering iron just like touch the whole roll of solder. I'm like, oh god, please no. I think it's fine. Yeah, like, I have to redo it, because if you can see it, and it is hard to see, like, the pins here on this side are, like, barely sticking up through the board. It's just not... It's not professional. And it's just, it's asking for things to go wrong. Wow, confirmed wicked rude person Keith Carberry just called me in the middle of my video. Not even considering, I need my phone for the video, Keith, you jerk. Oh my god. That's bad, that's a bad idea. Don't fucking cross over your hand with the red hot soldering iron. I think that is everything. Let's see if it just kind of... Mm. Ah! Oops. Might have to lift this out a little bit, because the thing is... A lot of times it's like there's still a little bit of solder, so you just kind of have to lift it to like break that little bit that's in there. So that side came out. And now this side is out. So, thank God we're good. There's not going to be any more fucking problems. There we go. Now it's sticking in there nice. That's what that should look like. How many times has Kyle burned himself tonight? How many times has Kyle burned himself with a soldering iron ever? Zero times. Zero times. If you don't count when you wipe off your soldering iron and some solder like flicks off of it and hits your hand, I've done that. But come on. And Keith, just so just because you're you're new here, you haven't been here, this whole part is probably just gonna be like a montage set to some like mean bean machine music. That's some good montage music. Okay, now that I actually am trying my hand at soldering this on the table, I'm gonna go back to the helping hand, because fuck this. This actually sucks way more.
So we might finally be done with this part uh, again for a second time. Um, all the joints look pretty good. They look pretty good. Um, except for that one. Okay, looks good. So I'm going to leave the desoldering iron on because now we're going to the fucked up shitty part which is I have to solder a wire onto this pin here and then bring it down to like this tooth here on the cartridge connector and I have to put it up high enough so that it the glob of solder won't get caught in the connector pins to the system when you put it in there. Wire. Um, and I found out after I bought this wire that it's too small for my wire stripper. The smallest hole, it does nothing. So I have to strip it with like a box cutter. So yeah, the the first time I did a cartridge, I thought the wire was going to be like one of the easy parts, um, and it was not, because it was a huge pain to strip, and it was a huge pain to hold in place, because it's very, I don't know if you can tell from the video, it's a very small wire, but it's very stiff, so it doesn't like to play nice. Oh. The real question now is how I'm going to hold this, because I need something to hold the circuit board, got to hold the soldering iron, got to hold the solder, got to hold the wire. That's four things. I have two things. This also has two things, so theoretically it could help with some of that, but as previously mentioned, it's a piece of crap, so. Or maybe the table holds the board, and this thing just holds the wire. That would be super helpful. There we go, that's not bad. I'll take that. The tricky part about soldering the wire is that it's so thin that it gets hot wicked fast. And it can actually, like, and the shielding is super thin too, so if you're holding it, it'll actually get too hot and you'll, like, drop it. Maybe I'll turn it so you can see it a little bit better. Alright, I guess that's... That's gonna be it, I guess. I'll weigh it down on this side. That's probably good. God damn it. Oh my god, kill me. Okay, hopefully that works. This is not even on. Whoops. Whoa, did I just do that? Like, correctly? And did it work? Let's take a look. That would be miraculous. Um, no, I super didn't. That is not looking great. Because it's probably, it's, I'm sure it's way too tiny to see, but, like, the wire is only connected by a tiny bit, and the rest of it is just sticking up. So let's fix that. Let's fix it in a way that doesn't completely obstruct the camera. Ah, 
Ah, no! Fuck. Ah, fuck! I almost just burned my finger. I think I did it. <sighs> no. That still isn't good. It's still just like a tiny little tip that's connected. That's so fucking annoying. And that's assuming that I haven't already fucking broken this chip by overheating the pin. Guess we'll try more solder, I don't know. I can't even reach this. The thing about the helping hands is it can't hold the wire and the board at the same time because it's got jagged teeth and they don't line up, so if you put it on the board, the teeth stick up and the wire just slides through it. Well, I hope that one works, because that's a lot of solder. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and call that good. Man, fuck soldering wires. So now time to strip the other side of the wire, and then I'm going to have to figure out exactly what t tooth it has to be connected to. What, dude? There we go. So let's look here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and these two. So I'm pretty sure this is the tooth right here that I have to connect it to, but let me double check. Oh yeah, I should put a little uh, thingy on here. What a lot of people do is they will put a little little tag over the window on the EEPROM. It's like pretty unlikely that like, um, where'd my scissors go? Okay. It's pretty unlikely that, um, normal like halogen or fluorescent lights inside are going to produce enough UV light to even flip like one bit on the chip. for the amount of time it takes you to put it back in the case, but it's a good idea to just cover it up anyways. And label it so we know what's in there. So we did that. What is a better way to do this? Like, I should, I guess I should just put a dab of solder on the pin first, and then try to add the wire into it, because the wire heats up so fast it won't be a problem to actually get it hot. That makes sense, right? That makes sense. I, yeah. 
Don't, nobody answer that question. I don't want to know if you think it makes sense. It makes sense to me. Let's do it. Mm, are you going to get hot enough to melt this? Are you? Come on, buddy. I'll turn, got to turn it up. Got to turn up the heat. There we go. Whoa. That might be a little too much. Ow, fuck. Come on. Sorry, it was that thing I was talking about. I was holding the wire and soldering it and the wire was was getting really hot and was hurting my fingers. Okay, so that's not like the cleanest soldering job in the world, but I think it'll be fine. Ah, fuck! Is that like... God damn it. I'm trying to see, like, how much of the wire is actually soldered in there, because it doesn't seem like it's that much. But it doesn't have to be that much, either. It's fine. Guys, I'm making an executive decision. It's fine. Let's test it. Got my little mini handheld Genesis. And we'll just see right now. We'll just see. Does it work? That's in there. Looks like no, but hang on, this thing's a finicky piece of crap. Mmm. If it continues to not work, I'll have to test it in a real Genesis that actually works. Let's see. Hey! That's what we like to hear. Got a Sonic 2 Pink Edition that may or may not be too blown out to see. But we can start it. We can play it. Let's, uh, let's put it back up on the TV. We can all take a fun look at it. So the fun thing about this is it's got video out, so we can we can see it together. It works. There it goes. You can probably hear it buzzing. Uh, that's because that's because this thing sucks, not because the game sucks. Still can't see it. Let's get intimate. Yeah, so this is Sonic 2 Pink Edition. Looks like this, if you can see it, you're Amy Rose. She's got a hammer. Um, and it's... It's not 100% always harder than the original Sonic 2, but it's pretty tough because she can't turn into a ball, and she she doesn't turn into a ball at all, so that's including you can't roll, 
and you're vulnerable if you jump without doing your hammer attack. But you can do this. That's that's a fun time. So that was my uh, the time I spent with this ROM was sort of like. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's like a cool novelty, but it's like there's nothing that interesting about it. And then I found this out, and then I was like, oh shit! Now it's on. You can use that to get everywhere. So there's there's probably some fun like game breaking stuff you can do with that ability. Um, this is pretty much exactly how I think Amy Rose played in the Sonic Advance games. So she does that, and she also has this weird, like, downward... If I attack and hit down at the same time, I do this weird, like, hammer spin. Ooh, I bounce off enemies with that. That's fun. So anyways... So anyways, we've made a video game. But our work's not done yet, because we have to print out a label and stuff. But I'm glad it worked, because that would have sucked. Now we get to use the hair dryer. So, where did Page Master go? There it is. This is the Page Master. Um, so what we're going to do with this is uh, heat up the sticker. that will heat up the glue and make it um, loose again, and then you just peel the sticker off. I've heard about that for years, I never got a chance to try it, but I tried it um, with the first repro that I did, and it worked like crazy magic. Sorry, I was talking into the wrong camera the whole time. There it is. Hi. Um, so I guess we'll see what happens. It'll be loud, obviously. It's a hair dryer. You've heard of hair dryers before. Let's, okay. All right, let's see if that worked. Eh. Eh. Mm. This one might not come off as cleanly as the last one. But look at that, it's just like coming right off. Ugh. It's a little gunky. Hmm. That's too bad. Cause this is like leaving behind a sticky residue, like it's not a problem, I'll just use like goo gun or something, but it was nice that the last one I did just literally came off like no residue, no nothing. Whoops! That was off camera, wasn't it? But it's off now. Fuck. Sorry. Um, yeah, there's a... can catch the light there. There's a bunch of sticky crap on it now that I have to use, like, Goo Gone on. Which might be a problem, because I think I'm out of Goo Gone. I can use alcohol. That's a, that's a good point. Okay, sure. Can I use alcohol? Like, I said that like I knew it, but I don't know that I knew that. Alcohol doesn't get off sticker residue, does it? Gotta think... Mm, gotta think about it. Mm, I don't trust it. Mm, mm. Okay, fine. Keith says it gets off sticky stuff, so I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll fucking find out right now. Fuck him. I don't know why I'm acting like it won't. I mean, alcohol cleans off, like, everything, so...
That is like... I mean, I guess it is coming off, sort of. Not really, though. More of what's coming off is bits of the paper towel onto this thing. Uh... Alright, I'll be right back. I'm gonna look for Goo Gone, and I'm gonna look for something that's not a paper towel. Success! Ugh, I found the tiniest little itty bit of Goo Gone, and that'll be enough for what we needed to do. Goo Gone is like, I don't want to say it's like something that people don't know about, but I feel like for as effective as it is, it doesn't get nearly, like, the recognition it deserves. Goo Gone is, like, amazing for cleaning up basically anything sticky. Let's see. It's like... making the alcohol look like a fucking chump right now. Are you kidding me? Look at that shit. It's like completely clean. The only thing about the Goo Gone that's really a bummer is that it itself is not the easiest thing to clean up. It's like a little greasy or like oily. Um, not like a real grease or a real oil, but it's just kind of like, there'll be like kind of like a, like a, mm, just like a little film, like you can sort of feel it, but. <laughs> It comes off. And I still have to get this top part here. And that was like a like that whole thing cleaned up that sticker residue in like two seconds. And I can't even find the tiny ass little dab of goo gone I put on this rag. It's like it, it like there's still like this much left in that tiny bottle. Which is why I got this tiny bottle, because the last one I had was like a huge bottle and it took me like six years to get through it. So I was like, I don't need a giant bottle. Cool. Now we got our nice clean cartridge front. And we'll put our new label on it. I spent like, like two to three solid, almost full days working on this label that I made. Um, I don't think I'm gonna, I, I, I don't think I'm gonna do that again, but I was really satisfied with the way it turned out, so maybe I will. Let's print it out with computers. Uh, hey guys, you heard about computers? Here we go. Got my uh, sticky photo paper. There we go. I guess I'll stop rambling and just fucking do it because I just looked at the clock a minute ago and I thought it's probably 11, maybe 12. It's one, so why don't we, why don't, what do you say we wrap this shit up? Anyways, after you spend three full days designing uh, your artwork, and then you spend another two days getting the right set, print settings on your stupid inkjet printer, it'll finally print out like this, and it'll look pretty good. I think it looks great on a computer screen, but once I print it with my shitty printer, it looks stupid. Um, and then this is, I printed out two, I don't know if you can see, but this one's ruined because, like, ink, like, there's just, like, globs of ink on it, I don't know what the, 
My printer's dumb. I might have to just start going to Kinko's or something. Uh, but yeah, let's cut it out. I also spent like fuck that doesn't look great. I spent a long time after like it was such a painstaking process because it was like so much more painful than I expected um to design this artwork because I was too much of a perfectionist about it. Um, and then I was like, hey, I'm done. And then it took two more days to get the printing settings right, and I just went crazy. And then I went, hey, I'm finally done. And then it took me like three hours to like figure out how to print it in such a way that it is easy to cut without fucking up because this photo paper is wicked unforgiving. If you like, if there's just a tiny nick out of place, like, you can't, you like, trying to fix it, it will only end up making it worse. Like, I ended up with, like, I ended up with a Genesis cartridge uh, label that was, like, a quarter of an inch too narrow because I had taken off so much from the sides trying to fix it. But I think I am good now. So now we have this, but uh, the corners need to be fixed. So... I heard that you can go to craft stores and get punch tools that will literally just have the right shape and just go boom, and then it's done. And I definitely need to get one of those. But next best thing until then, I got recommended was to use baby nail clippers because they're a little bit curved, even though it doesn't really work. But just gonna, I'm gonna take off like a little corner, just a, mm, just a, like a smidge, just a little, just a little kiss there. And then. One more, and then another, and then, yeah, you can't see it super great, but. If you like compare the two curved edges, what, is that the wrong, no, okay. You can barely see it. I guess I'll just hold it up for the iPhones, you guys suck, but that's pretty much like a serviceable curve. You know, ultimately I would, I really, really want to get to the point where these games that I'm making look like pretty much 100% professional, but at the end of the day, it's like, you are making it in your basement, like it doesn't have to be perfect. Because the thing is, if the label isn't cut exactly perfectly and the curves aren't exactly the right curve, you really only notice if you actually study it. Like, if you just glance at it, your eyes will tell you that it looks right. So it's fine. That one wasn't amazing. Oh, that's the last one. Okay. Now it looks like this. Um, it's not perfect, but it probably looks totally fine when you just look at it, right? It's perfect. Um, now it's time to put it on. Moment of truth. We'll see if I can do it right the first time. Let's see, maybe I'll just... I don't know why I didn't think of this. I just raise my chair so I'm a little bit higher. This the Amazon reviews for this paper did specifically say that it was very hard to peel off the back. And uh those people were not lying.
Now I'm just like, come on, it's 1 a.m., I want to go... Oh, wait, I want to go to sleep. That's not true. Sleeping is not what I'm going to be doing, but I do want to be done with this stream. All right, so here's the thing, is that classic problem with um, homemade cartridges is that the fold at the top pops off, but I've only ever seen people put it, like, front on first like this and then try to fold it back, and it always looks terrible, so... I tried putting it on top first, the first time I did one, and that seemed to pretty much work perfectly, so let's... No, come off! Whoa. Let's try it again. God damn it. I've all, like, putting on stickers is, like, some of the most nerve-wracking shit for me. I just hate it. I hate the permanence of it. Here we go. Put that on there. And then, let's see. I'm gonna kind of, like, fold it and kind of do, like, run it back and forth to... Sorry. For a second, I thought I noticed, like, ink globs on the sticker. Like, am I halfway through putting this on perfectly, and I'm going to find that find out that I have to reprint this whole thing and take it off? Because that'll be a bummer. But it's fine. Look at that. That's fucking hot. Hey, kids, that's hot. Alright, so then we'll just put our board back in there and get the back do, 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 do. is this the right back? I'm gonna have some more, there's some gunk on there, I'm gonna have to take it off with some more goo gun So this is what you end up with, is, uh, I have a pretty fun, cool game. This is a working, uh, Sonic 2 Pink Edition. Play as Amy Rose. So, like I said at the top of the video, uh, if you're one of our $9 a month patrons, you can win this. So I'm gonna have, uh, once this video goes live on YouTube, I will have a post on patreon.com slash runbutton, uh, where if you are a $9 or higher, uh, donor, you can leave a comment on the post, and then one of you will be randomly selected to receive this game. And uh, if you're a, a rich corporate CEO of some kind, and you'd like to donate $50 a month, you'll just get one of these. You won't even have to win it. Um, but I hope you guys are excited about this. I think it's pretty cool. And like I said, I'm committing to doing it for at least a year. So there's So this is the first one and there's going to be 11 more, and uh, I have uh, some ROM hacks in mind already, kind of picked out about stuff I want to do, and I'm pretty excited about it, because this was, this is like the small start. This is, I admit that Sonic 2 Pink Edition is not a phenomenally interesting ROM hack, or exciting ROM hack, but I have some pretty fun stuff in mind, so I hope you guys get excited for it. Um, I don't know, Keith, is there anything else I want to talk about? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Yeah, sure. Contentburger.biz will also take you to patreon.com slash runbutton. Contentburger.biz, or you can, if you want to get to the, the run button Patreon, you can go to welcome to the next level in 32x.world, and that will take you there as well. So uh, I guess I'll see you next time we made a game! Yakuza. Also, if you donate at the $9 level, you get to watch our brand new Let's Play of Yakuza 1 that we're doing. And you see our full playthrough of Shenmue and stuff. Go check out the Patreon. There's a lot of cool stuff on there, dog. Some cool stuff. Get some artwork. I don't know. You like artwork? I don't know you. That's it.